Yo, what is up guys? It's the Goblin and welcome back to another Call of Duty Black Ops 4 video. Tonight's video, we are going to be talking about, still to this date, one of my favorite weapons in this game and a weapon that you can always rely on and that has so many different awesome class setups that work with it. But I think at this point in the game, I've tried this with almost every combo you can get on it and I really do think that this combo of four attachments and an awesome class setup is the best for the KN57. I think this, this weapon is amazing as well. I want to give you guys the class setup as well as talk about some tips and tricks with this weapon. This gameplay here, I believe I get 130 kills or like 129 kills to be exact on the Nuketown, of course, playlist which is going on right now. So we're going to talk about the class setup, talk about some tips and tricks and other stuff like that. If you guys could drop a like on this video, 800 likes, you see it up on the screen right now. I have been uploading Call of Duty uh, videos quite consistently uh, over the last bit and of course just trying to get more and more into it over the summer and excited about Modern Warfare so I really want to say thank you to everyone supporting to drop in those likes I know it only takes half a second but it really does mean so much to a YouTuber everyone that drops likes that drops comments it is absolutely amazing I know people love the class setup videos from me and want to want to know a little bit about current tips and tricks and class setups so let's go ahead and get right into it and talk about this so we'll go over the class setup first of all and then talk about the gameplay and how I was able to maneuver around because uh, with this setup. So first of all, four attachments. Let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it and talk about the setup so that I have some more time to talk about the gameplay. First attachment, hybrid mags. Very, very self-explanatory. I don't really need to talk about it too much. Um, you can see I have 45 bullets in each magazine and also a fairly fast reload. That is the beauty of hybrid mags. It's basically, there's no reason not to use it. Um, it's probably the... Uh, maybe it's not the most required attachment on this weapon that might be stock which is my second attachment but either way these are one and two you pretty much need to use it so hybrid mags is what I rock next is going to be stock which works amazing on an assault rifle uh, especially an assault rifle that you want to this isn't like your ICR or like your swordfish which I guess is a, t a tactical assault rifle but or tactical rifle but you know what I mean this isn't like that you're not sitting back in the top of your building trying to pick people off all game you're gonna be doing that sometimes but this is a weapon that is is it's flexible of what you can do with it. So hybrid mag stock. Next attachment is going to be quick draw, just so you can get the gun up quick. Quick draw also pairs amazing with gung ho, which is one of the perks that I have on this setup. And then uh, quick draw is, is just always amazing. Even on like, I find that when you don't use quick draw, it just puts you in a twitch shooting game where the, usually the first shot wins in, in most scenarios in Call of Duty, it, you know. You really want to get your gun up quick, and quick draw does make a world of difference, especially on assault rifles, which do zoom in fairly slow, or ADS fairly slow in this game, just because if you remember back when this game first came out, the whole assault rifle SMG sort of debacle and, you know, trying to get those balanced is not really a unique struggle to Black Ops 4. It's something that happens at the start of a lot of different Call of Duty games, but yeah, quick draw, and then fourth attachment is going to be the rapid fire, just because this weapon doesn't have too much recoil, and uh, I like to play it into, you know, Know, having a weapon that can do well at medium range and at close range so even with those SMGs which are at a decent spot in this game right now you can still win gunfights against those players and be able to take out multiple enemies I mean rapid fire helps against different things it's not just essentially that time to kill on a one-on-one -on -one gunfight or a one-on-one -on -one enemy there are so many different aspects of it that are added in when you have a little bit of a faster time to kill taking on multiple enemies which of course happens quite a bit on nuketown so four attachments there pretty self-explanatory we'll show the whole class setup right here up on the screen hybrid stock rapid fire quick draw and then for my attachments or not my attachments we just went over that for the perks I of course has gut have gung-ho as my go-to perk too and the beautiful thing about this class setup is I call it the rotating perk so on this game you can see I ran flak jacket now why did I run flak jacket obviously it makes sense when you look what I was playing the nuketown 24 7 playlist of course flak jacket is gonna be useful on nuketown just because I know I'm gonna be patrolling either buildings whether it's on the aggressive or you know on offense or on defense and I know I'm also going to be patrolling around that middle sort of area, whether it's playing the sidecar, playing around the truck in the middle. People love to chuck grenades and different stuff like that. Flak jacket, I mean, it, you don't need, it doesn't take me an hour to sit here and explain why flak jacket is useful on um, Nuketown. Now, honestly, in this game, I don't think flak jacket is as needed or as useful as it has been in previous games, Nuketown, which I wouldn't even touch Nuketown without it. Um, but it still is definitely the way to go. Now, what I mean by the rotating perk here is you could take this, if 
you're playing like a free for all on a, a, a you know, normal medium to larger sized map, you would want to swap out that flak jacket because that would be kind of useless over to a dead silence. If you were running it without a specialist, like I'm using crash here, so I of course have my ammo supplied and uh, my health supplied. But if you didn't have your ammo supplied and you wanted to rush and sort of maybe run over the enemy's bodies to pick up these uh, packages, you might want to run scavenger. So a rotating perk there, but this setup really comes down to the attachments and your ability to win gunfights. Now, I'm confident with this setup that if I have my gun up and I'm coming around the corner, I sort of have my ADS and have myself ready for the gunfight before the enemy, you are, th this is a reliable setup. You're not going to lose the majority of fights. The, uh, the only times you will is at long range, you will lose to weapons that are just cleaner at long range. I mean, this thing doesn't, I mean, it does take a while to kill people at range and you can't have perfect aim. It isn't like a complete laser beam at range, especially based on the attachments and the setup that I went with, you know, that this is designed for more mid to, to rushing. So you can see there in the first half, we put up a very, very uh, good half as well. Um, and then, but that's for long range fights. And then for close range fights, you will be beat sometimes by, of course, shotgun players or SMGs, but that's about, usually when you go into a game, start the game off, play it naturally, and then as you sort of learn, oh, if there's like two Argus players or two uh, SMG up close players, you might want to play at a little bit more of a distance. And then on the other side, if everyone is sitting in the back with snipers, you might want to go aggressive because then you would have the close range advantage. You know, there's only five or six enemies, depending on what game mode or uh, playlist you're playing uh, in Call of Duty, or in this game, on the enemy team, and you can definitely maneuver around those and be smart about it. So we'll see here on the second half, I had a very, very good first half and good start to this game. Uh, coming into the second half, 65 to seven. And I realized at this point, I wanted to go for a hundred plus kills. And of course, a hundred plus kills is um, doable on domination in this game. Nuketown is probably one of the easiest ways to do it just because of the size of the map, uh, how fast paced it is, how predictable the spawns are and predictable the routes are because there's not really too many options. You know, it's a simple map. And of course, kill streaks are gonna go absolutely ham. So if ever you have over 50, obviously if you're playing two halves 50 kills or around 50 kills going into that second half the 100 is definitely plausible even if you have like 30 or 40 but you have streaks ready to go and this second half is a lot of destruction now this is something that you'll see happen a lot in domination not only on nuketown more on smaller maps but i think i get like a ton of captures this game just based on the fact that when the enemies are spawn flipping so often and they are spawn flipping based on of course the kill streaks kill at the enemies uh teammates push into the spawn and then they spawn out of the other one it's a very simple cycle that happens here, but you can capture a lot of home flags and get a lot of free points because people, the enemies will spawn on C, they'll capture that, and then they'll all get wiped out by the streaks and by teammates pushing, then they'll spawn at A. You can sort of juggle those flags, and the great thing about domination in this game, at the start of every game, at the start of every round, you should be running through that flag because you don't have to actually stay on the flag until the actual closing date, until it's done, to get the points. You just have to be on it for a little bit of an amount of time uh, during the actual time where it, it, you know someone else stays on to finish it off so right here you can see get the gun going rainbow so you know diamond camo we're getting the kills up with it and I'm getting my streaks and right here I realize all right looking at the map I am in the enemy spawn and I was on a pretty intense streak there so I wanted to take my take a second make sure I get all of my kill streaks and then once I get that I realize I can do you know I can play a little more risky here although I was already completely in the enemy spawn so I didn't really have any need to leave the building that's always a question on nuketown when you are usually when you're playing aggressive you want to play in the building so if the enemies are spawning out back whether it's a whether it's c playing that downstairs or upstairs of that building is so smart and there are a couple of ways that the enemies can rush you from but just making sure you're slowing it down when you are close to the streaks is uh, a number one uh, key so you can see here once again they're trying to shoot down my streaks at the back i'm trying to slay out i'm, I'm thinking they're going to continue spawning there based on where my teammates are but you can sort of realize when all right our teammates pushed into that back fence Spawns are probably going to flip, and at that point, I can make the decision to either go stand on the flag and get those points right there, or to push back the other way. Now, there, I made the decision to push back the other way just because I realized this game was coming down to a close. I didn't know how many kills I had exactly. I wanted to push the limit, push the tempo to try to get that 100 plus. So, you know, if, if I wanted to just secure my streak, which would be the smart thing, uh, 50 points away, I would walk over there. But I was confident enough to go, uh, you know, go for the kills because I was pushing towards late game, and uh, it was it. 
ultimately did turn out because I was able to get the streaks and then once you die after you get the streaks it doesn't really matter you know if I come you know I'm not really unless you're really focused on getting a nuclear or focused on getting a flawless gameplay if I lap my streaks once or twice and then you kill me when I'm seven or eight hundred points off of the next one it's not really that big of a deal you can sort of just respawn start milking those plus tens those plus tens from all your kill streaks that you got in the last life and then sort of use those distractions and the control and the map control that you have to establish yourself on the objectives of the map or on the gun on gun actions you can see here this game honestly it only lasted like 10 minutes too if this was a longer dawn that lasted like 13 14 minutes who knows how many kills i could have got but 129 to 8 oh yeah 13 objectives so pretty good stuff thanks for watching y'all drop a like on this video if you guys could uh definitely check out this class that i absolutely love it for the KM57 and yeah subscribe drop a like and that's about it and I'm out peace have a great night everyone